He's a mighty God and a powerful God. I want to ask you to stand with me for a moment. I want to ask you to pray with me. Father, we worship you. God, we glorify you tonight. Father, as we come together tonight in this prophetic moment, we worship you. We praise you and we honor you. And Father, I acknowledge tonight as we enter into this moment of worship, prayer, word, impact from your supernatural presence. God, we invite your Holy Spirit into this house as we worship tonight and we've come and we've gathered to praise. And tonight, God, I pray that your absolute stirring would rock our lives. God, we pray tonight that you would awaken us, stir us, and Father, we gather here with purpose and intent I pray for those who might be struggling. We pray for those who might be lost or not part of the household of faith. We pray for those that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that they would come into that relationship. And Father, tonight I pray that as you utter your words in your power and your strength, that you would awaken your church. God, tonight I invite your church, your people, to worship you. For God, you dwell in the praises of your people. God, there's power in the praises of your people. Because your power comes forth, your presence, your anointing. God, as I pray tonight, I pray that you would open your atmosphere and pour out your spirit upon us. Father, we worship you. God, we worship you. I speak the name above every name. That name every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In heaven, in earth, and under the earth. That he is Lord. His name is Jesus Christ. Born in a manger, died on a tree, put in a tomb, rose again, ascended to heaven and coming back. We proclaim his name tonight. Yes. Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, as we gather here, we praise you. I invite everyone here tonight to say his name. Jesus. 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 Now I invite you to lift your hands and worship Him. Just begin to cry out tonight. Begin to call out tonight, Jesus. 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 You are holy. You are holy. Come on, church, just worship Him tonight. Worship Him tonight. Worship Him. Lord, You are holy. You are holy. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. The whole earth is filled with your glory. We worship you. Call his name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeshua. Jesus. 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 Santo do Bobo Catara Matheus. Oh, worship him tonight, church. Worship him tonight. God wants to move in this house tonight. Worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Santo do Bobo Catara Matheus. Show the Bobo Catara Matheus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, just cry out, cry out, cry out. 
Father, we worship you. We praise you tonight. God, you are God and you are holy. You are mighty and powerful. Mighty to save. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God, we cry out tonight that you're holy. Come on, church. Press in. Press in. Press in. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. 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 God, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, God. We praise you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Just take your hands and wave them. And wave them as a wave offering to God. Father, we praise you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 There's healing in his praise. In his presence. Father, we pray for healing tonight. We pray for anointing tonight. We pray for a setting free tonight. Father, we worship you tonight. You are mighty and powerful and glorious. God, we rebuke the devourer tonight. We tear down strongholds in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, I rebuke uh, evil spirits. We, we command curses to be broken. We command the demonic presence of Satan to leave this place in the name of Jesus. God, we pray an awakening, an awakening, God, that is like a veil, a, a blinder coming off the eyes. Father, we pray your anointing here tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. God, we cry out tonight. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Hallelujah. 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 Just say his name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for carrying the weight of our burden. Thank you, Jesus, for saving our soul. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for setting us free. Thank you for the miracle of salvation. God, we praise you tonight. We thank you for sending your Son. We pray in his name tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Turn in your Bibles to Malachi chapter 4. We will continue in the atmosphere of worship. I don't have a long message tonight. I have a prophetic message tonight that I believe the Lord has laid on my heart for this season and for this night. Malachi chapter 4, the Bible says this in verse 6. And he will restore the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Yeah. Lest I come and smite the land with a curse. And then turn with me to Acts, the second chapter. Acts chapter 2. The Bible says this, 
But Peter taking his stand in verse 14. With the eleven raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only the third hour of the day. But this, was, this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. Now let me put this in context for a moment. The power of the Holy Spirit had just fallen upon the people in the upper room. The Bible says that cloven tongues like as a fire fell upon each one of them and they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit was giving utterance. Now there were people there from all over the area, all over the surrounding areas, languages, tribes. They came to celebrate the Jewish tradition. And although they were Jewish, they were still multicultural. Now, the scholars will argue with that with you. I had one professor that did not agree with me in seminary about that and graded me poorly. But I did not agree with him, so I went on. But the reality is it was a multicultural moment, and it was a spiritual moment, and it was a supernatural moment. Now, listen. Our culture today will tell you to not talk about Jesus Christ. Our culture today will laugh at you if you mention His name. How could you believe in that stuff? That's a myth. That's a legend. But it is amazing to me at the same time. Our culture is filled with zombies and vampires and demonic stuff that people will worship, flock to, to and, and, and look for. It's the truth. Amen. And so in a world that would say don't follow Jesus, it has become very spiritual. Enamored with the supernatural. But isn't it amazing how God is supernatural, He's authentic and He's real, he walks with integrity and power and people can run and chase whatever demonic thing they want but the power of the Holy Spirit is the power that supersedes all of that because it is true, it is power, it is the presence of God manifest in this earth. God sent His Son when sin entered the world, the sending of God, the mission of God, that through Him the world might be saved. And Jesus Christ entered this world, God incarnate, God among flesh. Yes. When Jesus Christ died on a cross, rose again, <clears throat> right before He ascended into heaven, He told the disciples, go and wait in Jerusalem. I am sending to you a comforter, and he said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, after that the Holy Spirit comes on you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and everywhere. Now listen, we're going to read one more scripture, and you can be seated after that. But here's the reality. All of the fake, and all the junk, and all the stuff, and all the... The spiritualism, demonic stuff in the world. And everybody wants to tell us, don't say the name of Jesus Christ. And we'll laugh at you if you're Pentecostal. Let me tell you something. I will say this emphatically from the pulpit, from the corner of the street, Amen. in the mall, at Starbucks. It does not matter because the power of God is real. Amen. And He has vanquished the enemy. Yes. He has destroyed the enemy. And Jesus sent the Holy Spirit into the world to empower the saints. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 And right here, Peter is testifying mm -hmm. of what had just happened. The power of the Holy Spirit came into the upper room. And he's telling everybody around, this is what happened. Peter, the cussing sailor, stands on the rooftop and preaches. Men of Judea, Listen to me. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only the third hour of the day. This is what the prophet Joel spoke about, wrote about under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it shall be in the last days, God says, 
that I will pour forth of my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my bond slaves, bond servants, both men and women, I will in those last days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will grant wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord come. And it shall be that everyone, <coughs> everyone, everyone, come on somebody, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Now, somebody, a few weeks ago, I, I shared this with you the other day, and, and I talked about the reality. I was going into church on the Sunday night of the last big uh, blood moon moment, and there was people staring at the moon. And we were when we went at church and preached and prayed and all. And later on, I wrote on my Twitter, Facebook stuff, uh, a lot of people were watching the moon, but we must follow the sun, S-O-N, if we want to be set free. I had somebody respond to that on Facebook. They were not happy. That's all right. And they said it's prophetic, and they wrote in that Facebook post, and they, they, they uh, specified Acts 2.20. And I responded to them, and I said, yes. Powerful verse in the context of Peter preaching his sermon as, prof as he quoted Joel, in prophecy, uh -huh. and guess what? More than 3,000 people were added to the church that yes, day. Yes. There was a revival that broke out. Right. Yeah. Wow! Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Acts chapter 20. The Bible says this. Verse 7, On the first day of the week when we were gathered together to break bread, Paul began talking to them, intending to leave the next day. And he prolonged his message until midnight. Mm -hmm. There were many lamps in the upper room where we were gathered together. And there was a young man named Eutychus sitting on the windowsill, sinking into a deep sleep. And as Paul kept on talking, he, talking about Eutychus, was overcome by sleep and fell down from the third floor and was picked up dead. Yeah. But Paul went down and fell upon him. And after embracing him, he said, Do not be troubled, for his life is in him. And when he had gone back up and had broken the bread and eaten, he talked with them a long while until daybreak. And they left. They took away the boy alive and were greatly comforted. Father, we praise, your, praise you. We pray your anointing on your word tonight. We pray that you would strengthen our faith and our life and guide us in your word. And God, that you would stir us deeply in your power. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Apostle Paul in the scripture, he had left Ephesus in a kind of a riot moment. They were mad at him in Ephesus. They had figured out the economy had shifted because Jesus had come to town. Praise the Lord. And those that did not follow Jesus Christ and that were the merchants selling the trinkets from the uh, temple Artemis or the goddess Diana, they were mad because their business had gone down because people did not buy the idols and the trinkets because they were following Jesus. And there was a riot and a fuss. And when everything kind of calm, Paul left town and he traveled. And this moment, he is in a place called Troas. And he arrived there and he was preaching to the people. And he was talking with them and preaching and preaching and preaching. And the Bible says that he kept on preaching, intending to leave, but he kept on going. 
And he kept on preaching. He was planning to leave the next day. And he prolonged his sermon until midnight because he was trying to get it all in before he left. <coughs> and the people were perhaps hungry for the word. But there was this young man named Eutychus sitting in the windowsill. And he was there. And as he preached, Eutychus did what many of us might do. He fell asleep. And Eutychus fell out of the window and he fell down to the ground, three floor, or three stories below, and he was dead, died. In 1906, 80% of the population of the United States of America attended church on any given Sunday. By 1996, that percentage was 40%. By the year 2006, it was 20%. A few years ago, it was 12.4%. And today, in a population of 322 million people, less than 10% of our population will attend church this coming Sunday. Now, there are people that will say, oh, no, 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 we're still a Christian nation. But the reality is this. If we will wake up and get our head out of the sand as a church, oh, yes. the people of God, yes. we will understand that we have become like sounding brass and clanging cymbal. We have not engaged the culture in which we live. We have decided too often in our life, it is easier to go through the motions of life and the tradition of life and the religiosity of life where we come in and we go out, but we never seem to impact the world. In fact, often the world impacts us more than we impact the world around us. So in this great world of 3.2 billion people, there is a great need for somebody to stand up and proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And yet tonight we find that there is a problem not only in the world or society, but in the church, we have become often so addicted to the experience of experience that we know how to go through the motions. We know how to come in and go out. We know if we need a breakthrough moment in our life, we can come to the altar for that moment and we get our fix. And we become codependent on that experience. Instead of being set free, we expect the pastor to carry us and crouch and be our crutch as we hobble through each week until we can make it back to the altar one more time to get set free again. And the reality is this, God never intended us to live like that as believers. He intended us to be set free and live in victory yes, yes. and in power. Yes. Right, right. Amen. Amen. But we come and we pray and then Monday we find ourselves right back where we were before Sunday. And Tuesday and Wednesday and finally we're calling the pastor, Pastor! Help me! Come on, Sister Blog. Yeah. <laughs> Help me! And we missed it. Uh -huh. We missed it. Because that is not what was intended uh -huh. ever. Right. That's right. The intent of the gospel is that when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it's no longer a rote moment of, of routine it's just about a religiosity of coming in the sanctuary and saying, well, i got to go to church again. No, it's about being in love with Jesus Amen. every day of our life. So when we're going through the valley and we're going through the fire and we're going over the mountain and all Hades is breaking loose, that we can walk along and say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've got the power and the presence of Jesus in me. I don't care what anybody says or thinks. I'm going to follow him and live in victory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Come on, praise him. Amen. In this moment, Paul is preaching and preaching and preaching.
preaching. Eutychus falls asleep, falls out of the window, and he's dead. Gone. In our culture, in the church, and in society today, we have been preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. You can get preaching on YouTube, on television, on uh, every kind of possible channel. You can find it somewhere. And you'll find people that preach all kinds of ways and styles and do kinds of things. But yet, the culture, and all the time that we've been preaching and preaching and preaching, has fallen asleep. Has fallen asleep. If any have fallen out the window, and they're lying dead. They're lying dead. Dead in their sin, dead in their iniquity, dead in their depression, mm -hmm. dead in their, their frustration, dead in their misery. Yeah. Yeah. And we walk by them all the time and we walk by the dead. There are at least five generations alive in America, really probably six. Uh, on the screen you'll see there's the builder generation, the boomer generation. There's the Buster generation, or Gen X, the Millennials, and Homeland generation. If you go before the Builders, there's the Silent generation, who are elderly now. These generations have lived a life where they've heard a lot of preaching. America was once a Christian nation in name, in theme, and in thought. Yet today we find that the Supreme Court has ruled its direction. Of misdirection. We find that they've legislated from the bench and they've legislated morality out of our country. Yes, yes. We find there are challenges on every hand in that regard, and it's always well, what feels good is what is right. And if I feel this way, then don't bother me. And if you feel this way, then, then, then that's okay. But we miss something, and that is that the Word of God is never changing. That's right. right. It's yes. the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. And yes. it's not a word of judgment, although it can be, it is a word of love. Yes. Because there's love in the reality of what the scripture is. That God designed humanity to be in relationship with Him and the whole purpose of His mission of sending Jesus Christ into the world was that we would be connected to God in relationship. In other words, that uh, heaven would invade earth so earth could be connected to heaven. Oh, come on, that's good stuff. That was good. <laughs> so Jesus would come incarnate and sacrifice and His blood would cover our sins so we could go to heaven. Amen. Yes. Yes. The Hallelujah. absolute mission of God. Praise God. Yes. The builders lived a life where they, they worked and they worked and they worked to build a nation. Put a roof over the head and Food on the table and boomers would come along, born primarily after World War II as a population boom exploded. At that time, the largest generation ever born in the United States of America, but the first generation that was born about 1942, 44 to 1962, 64. The first generation to walk away from God in church. And parents would say, oh, what's wrong with you? Children would say, you don't love me. Of course I love you. I put a roof on your, your, I put a roof over your head and food on the table and clothes on your back. And children would say, but you never tell me you love me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And they would say, come on, let's go to church. And children would say, I don't want your church. Right. And I don't want your God. But I want to do things my way because it's all about me. Yeah. My money. My life, my stuff, me, 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 became known as the me generation. Right. Sexual revolution, drug culture, rock and roll, Woodstock, everything. Moral decay, because it's all about. They would birth a generation called Gen X. The Busters, because it became one of the most depressed, discouraged, 
outcast generations in the history of America. One of the smallest generations ever born in the history of America because boomers didn't have as much children, many children, as their builder parents did. Because it's all about me. Gen X became the first latchkey generation in America where kids would come home from school and they would find a key in the flower pot, let themselves in the door, and hang out for two or three hours while mom and dad worked. Because they needed the money to buy more stuff because it's all about me. And Gen X would say, hey, I want to do my things my way. It was a depressed generation. It's got a lot of names. It's the 13th generation of America. It's the last generation, the lost generation. The generation after, or the generation after the baby boom, but also known as Generation X, who would have children called the Millennials. Millennials born from 1982-ish to around the two year 2000, who were wanderers in many ways, but uh, began to search and wonder, and now they became the third unchurched generation in the United States of America, America going to sleep, where the population is falling out of a window, lost away from God. And then around the year 2000, 2001, the homeland generation would be born. A generation that never knew a world without cell phones or cable television. In fact, by that time, cable television was digital. It was no longer 10 or 12 channels. It was 200 channels. Uh -huh. Everyone had a cell phone. Everyone does what they want, when they want, how they want. Church, tonight, I communicate to you. It's almost midnight. Mm -hmm. almost. It's almost midnight. Midnight is here. Oh. Jesus is coming. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Time is short. Yes. And people are dying. Yes. Lying in the street. Now tonight, that may be you. You may say to me, Pastor Sean, I've gotten weary and tired and, you know, I, I do the church stuff, but I've lost it. I, I don't feel God like I used to feel. I wonder if He's still there. It seems like He doesn't answer my prayer or hear me when I cry out. You feel like you've been thrown out the window and you've fallen down and you're dead. Quiet. Tonight, Communicate to you. Yes. Yes. Just like Paul did. He didn't say call the funeral home. He didn't say call the pallbearers. Right. He didn't say call the florist. He didn't say let's go make arrangements. He, the minute he saw what happened, he ran out of the house. He ran down three flights of stairs and he covered Eutychus. The Bible says he fell on him. He did something the prophets would do. He fell on a generation. He fell on a people. He fell on the, the brokenness. He fell on the woundedness. He fell on the one who was dead. And he breathed life into him in the power of Jesus' name. And the Bible says he picked him up. And he was not dead. And God today is waiting for somebody somewhere yeah. to say enough is enough. I'm tired of the routine. I'm tired of the mundane. I'm tired of people falling out of the window dead. I'm tired of broken lives. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to run down the, the stairs and I'm going to find somebody. Fall on them spiritually in Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. And pick them up. Tonight, you may be at a place where you need somebody to fall on you. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And tonight, I believe in Jesus. Yes, amen. He'll fall on you. Yes. He'll fall on you in your house. Yes. He'll fall on you in your car. Yes. He'll fall on you in your, your, your hallway of your house. And the kids, wherever you are, yes. He wants to rescue you. Yes. Tonight, I believe that 
God is calling us as people not to be satisfied. Oh, we're going to watch the train wreck as it happens. Look at the moon. Jesus is coming. While the world goes to hell. He called us to make disciples. To rescue the lost. To pick them up out of the gutter. To proclaim Jesus to them. Wow. I probably shared this story here before some time ago. My mother was a devout Catholic. Her mother was a devout Catholic. My mother was born in northern New Jersey. Her mother was born in New York. My grandfather was born in Brooklyn. Good um, Irish Catholic people, obviously. Their name was Kelly. She went to Latin Mass as a little girl, had a rosary, the whole deal. She met my father on a blind date. His father died when my dad was 15, the first time my ever dad, dad ever drove a car. He drove to the hospital. His father never came home. He died from alcoholism. Mm. My father was 15 years old. The only thing he knew as a role model in his life was his daddy. Mm. So he became just like him. Partied hard, ran fast, became an alcoholic. Went in the Air Force during Vietnam. Got his draft papers in his pocket. He went down to an Air Force recruiter. Ended up in Thailand. But on his way there, he met a woman, my mother, on a blind date in Biloxi, Mississippi. She didn't know he was an alcoholic. They got married. Every chance he gave, he had. Nights, weekends, he drank. Weekend warrior. Drinking all the stuff he could. When he got back from Southeast Asia, he went to school in Tar Tarrant County Community College at night. Worked at the phone company in the day, but every weekend he was drunk. He went to college because he wanted to be better than his father. <laughs> Provide for his family. One night, a guy named Barry, who was the teacher of the class, professor, math class, asked my father, Tim, you want to go get a cup of coffee? Now, my dad liked coffee second to alcohol. So he said, sure. He went out with the teacher, the professor. They went and they sat in a restaurant. He said, Tim, I want to tell you about my best friend. His name is Jesus Christ. My dad said, uh-oh, oh, wait. I'm not into that. I don't do that stuff. He said, well, just indulge me. Let me tell you. In that moment, he told him about Jesus Christ. Mm. My dad finished his coffee, thanked him. They paid, they left. That was it. He didn't pray nothing. Got in his car in Fort Worth, Texas, and on his way home to the house on John Drive, he pulled the car over and he cried out, Amen. Jesus, if you're real, if you're really real, if you're what he said is true, save me. Save me. And that car on the side of the road by himself, Jesus came, fell on him, and picked him up. And Jesus Christ will do the same thing in your life. He'll pick you up. Set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pastor Sean, how do you know this stuff is real? If it was just pews and carpet in a building, I wouldn't be here. Because all this stuff's going to go away. Yes. But my God is real, and I feel Him in my soul. Church up 
going to put life in it. He yes. wants to pick the church up and put power in it. He wants yes. to pick the people up and put power in them. Yes. When we walk down the street and something happens, we expect life and life comes in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to invite you to prayer. It's almost midnight. Yes. Yes. We have lost generations too many. Yes. They're in the streets. They're wherever. They've been deceived, led astray. Yes. Children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, whoever. Yes. People. So, Pastor Sean, this is a simple message. It's simply this. God is calling His church, the body of Christ, yes. uh -huh. to wake up, yes. to get yes. up, yes. to stand up, yes. to run down three flights of stairs and fall on the dead and pick them up yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Pray with me. Father, we worship You tonight. Amen.